This afternoon we're going to look at massage. Everyone loves a massage. What are the principles behind massage? I'm going to go through the basic principles behind massage and show you some very simple basic moves and also some simple things that anyone can do, especially at the health retreat. Obviously, if you're going to be having massage sessions and guests will be paying for that, it's important to have someone who's a trained massage therapist. And a trained massage therapist memorizes all their muscles. So this is quite a big job to know all your muscles, but for a massage therapist to massage effectively, they need to know their muscles, they need to know the source of the muscle and the site of insertion at the end of that muscle. And all of that tells them uh, where they're working, why they're working, etc., etc. And so when you've got uh, massage professionals like osteopaths and uh, physiotherapists. See, they're at university for about five years <laughs> studying these things. So I just want to go over some very basic things with some simple things that, that you can do without any basically necess necessary training for these simple things. So why massage? So what is the basis behind massage? Well, the life of the flesh is in the blood. So that's Leviticus 17.11 and massage moves blood. And wherever you're massaging, it's moving blood into an area and moving old blood out of the area. And this can be particularly helpful whenever there's um, tired muscles, cramping muscles, aching muscles, it can work very nicely for that. So what massage moves is blood. And again, we'll just recap what blood contains. It contains red blood cells and those red blood cells carry the oxygen. The red blood cells carry the nutrients. The red blood cells also carry water. No wonder it's called the life of the flesh and carries away waste. When we looked at hydrotherapy, we looked at how water is the best conductor of hot and cold and how moving limbs or areas of the body in and out of hot, uh, the hot and cold can certainly stimulate movement of the blood. So massage probably uh, is more for those areas where you've got um, cramping, tight muscles. It can also be very helpful with someone who has no feeling in their feet. So we talked about someone with no feeling in their feet. You can't put their feet in hot water, but you can use uh, came compresses on the bottom of the feet. And that might be done overnight and then through the day, you, uh, you maybe do one or two massage on their feet. So this is the big toe. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a foot here. So here's the foot. There's the ball of the foot. And then we've got the, the heel. And when you're massaging the feet, there's a few things to remember. Whenever you begin massage, you massage with light strokes. You never go straight into massaging hard. You've got to get the body that you're touching used to your, to your touch. So you start and you might just do gentle strokes, gentle strokes. Now it's quite possible that the person's ticklish and they won't like that. <laughs> so what do you do if someone's ticklish and they do not like that gentle stroke? I personally am ticklish, so that doesn't fit well with me. But what you can do is you squeeze. So you just squeeze the, the sides of the feet like that. So, so what you're doing is you're getting that feet comfortable with, with your touch. And 
having your fist like this, this is a good one, moving the, the fist like that, and you move it down like that, that's, that can be very, very nice. And that will not, uh, will not, it's not hurt, but will not stipul stimulate the tickle foot. And your, your, um, your two thumbs, you can go in hard like this, hard like this. They're called thumb circles, thumb circles, thumb circles, round and round. What you will find is the person with the ticklish feet, they're usually okay on the top of the foot. And so the other thing you can do is you can start with your hand, say this is knee, that's knee, and then you've got calf muscle coming down like that. And then you've got the ankle bones like this. Sorry, that's a little bit big, but I'm exaggerating. So here's, here's foot here. So you can start to move down like that. Now, remember that you've got your, your shin over the bone there and the blood supply to that area is not very good. And that's why with diabetics, you can often get wounds in that area. But you can't really massage the bone, but you can massage around here. So those thumb circles, and if your thumb gets sore, you can, you can just use your fingers like this and massage around that area. And also bring that down to the feet, bring it down to the feet like that. So sometimes what you can't do much on the bottom of the foot, especially if they're ticklish, you can do on the top. So it's, it's just gentle strokes there, squeezing the side of the feet. Another thing that's very good on the foot massage is pulling the toes. And you can pull them flick, pull them flick, pull them flick like that. What you'll find in many massage parlours, they will always wash the feet first. And that can be a nice thing to do. The biggest pores on the whole of your body are in the soles of your feet. So if someone's fairly toxic, they can have waste coming out of their feet. So it's nice to, uh, to wash them first. If you've got someone with no feeling in their feet, you want lukewarm water. And of course, it depends on the weather too, or even cool water. Someone that does have feeling in their feet, it's nice to start with the warm water and then dry them. And what would you use for massage? What we use is coconut oil. Coconut oil is a bit thicker oil, but it does eventually um, it does eventually soak into the feet. So the, the reason I'm mentioning the feet is I was attending a health retreat in Queensland and every afternoon they massage all the guests' feet. <laughs> so they have even the maintenance comes and does a bit, the laundry lady comes, so everyone has a foot massage and they love it. So again, starting squeezing, squeezing of the feet and, and your knuckle going down, but also thumbs going round, fingers going round, and you're just constantly um, keeping a rhythm. Rhythm is very important when you massage. Nothing jerky, pulling. Now you do pull the toes, but even then you pull with a rhythm. You pull with the rhythm. So remember with massage, rhythm is very, more, is very important. Also, um, I'm going to say preparation because that's when you first touch them. If you wash their feet first, that's really a preparation because you're already touching their feet in the drying of the feet. So the rhythm's very important, nothing jerky because that, that sort of goes against the rhythm, the rhythm of the body. A reflex for a, a woman's reproductive organs is from her heel up her calf. So often you'll find women can be a little tender there and that's a nice, nice place to massage. And with that, you'd pull it up, pull it up like this. So how long would you do a foot massage for? Usually there's only a necessity to do it for 20 minutes. And after 20 minutes, you might be start wondering what to do next. But you can alternate your moves, alternate your moves. And, and circles like this on the top of the feet, that can be very nice, very nice as well. So, 
So I've only given you a few moves for the feet, but um, you can just keep alternating to do that. And massaging the feet can really relax a person. Massage for the feet can help with circulation to the area. I was asked to visit a lady once in New Zealand. We had to go way out in the bush because this lady could not bear any uh, exposure to any electromagnetic field. So she had to be a long way from any, anything electric. She was lying on a lounge when we went in there and uh, there was not much we could do with her but I touched her feet and they were cold. So I said, do you mind if I massage your feet? And I massaged her feet and I must have massaged her feet for half an hour while we talked to her and by the end of the massage her feet were warm. So you see the massage does pull the blood down, down to the area, yes? Can I just ask about that electromagnetic field? Is there any way to to, for them to be cured of that problem? So when someone is, you know, ultra sensitive like that, this is their body. And for them to be so sensitive, their body's actually had a high dose of it, it's full. So they only have to have one more drop coming in and they've got overflow. And this can not only be electromagnetic field, but also chemicals. So they seem to, to add together to get this full cup. And when I look at the history of people who have this ultra sensitivity to chemicals or electromagnetic field, if you look at their history, they've had a lot of exposure. And on top of that, you put some dehydration. On top of that, you put, you know, many people clean their homes, they clean their laundry, they clean their bathroom with chemicals. There are chemicals everywhere. And people don't think of that. And then I know in Victoria they put smartphones in a lot of homes and then there were a lot of reactions to the smartphones. But it seemed to be there'd be more reactions to the smartphones if there were those other factors coming in. So environmental poisons really, an electromagnetic field is part of that, in, that um, environmental poisons. So let's go to the hands now. And the hands is also a lovely area to massage, yeah? Short question. Uh, does direction uh, matter when it comes to foot massage and shin ma massage? Well, mostly you're going up towards the heart, but with the feet you're pulling the toes away. So it can be sort of a combination. Mm. It co can be a combination of all of those. So let's go to hands. The hands are something else that you can massage. And with the hands, you do a similar thing to the feet. Obviously, it's totally different. But starting always beginning with stroking. Now, I don't know anyone with ticklish hands, like they have ticklish feet. But just the stroking is very nice, just the stroking and stroking also at the front. And rhythm, keep your rhythm, and we'll call them thumb circles. But it can also be with uh, your two fingers, it's those circles going round and round and round. So again, with the circles, it's rhythm, you're keeping those rhythms. And also with the fingers, it's squeezing, squeezing them and then flicking them, squeezing them and then flicking them, squeezing them and flicking them. And when you get into the palm of the hand, you can go quite big on the thumb circles there. But you might use your, your, your um, I'll just say the first two fingers. If you're not used to massaging, you might find that your thumbs get sore, so then you flick over to your two fingers. But also, as with the feet where you squeeze, 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 you can certainly do, do a sight on the side with the hands. So if people can't bear their feet to be massaged, you might go to their hands. And 
You would do that too to relax them. You can also do it to, to break down ice with someone who is very hesitant about being there. You can say, and I always ask permission, would you like me to give you a foot massage? Would you like, no, no, I don't want a foot massage. I don't like people touching my feet. Would you like me to give you a, a hand massage? And often they will allow that. Now, the other massage that I wanted to talk about is when a person has a headache. And they might have a headache for a few reasons. But something that is at the base of the head is the neck. And many headaches are due to what's happening in the neck and shoulders. So let's go to... the neck and shoulders. So often constriction in here is causing a restriction of our blood supply and nerve supplies up into the head. A lot of people, especially with headaches, it's very sensitive in the neck area. So you go very gentle there. But again, you start, the preparation is touch, touching, just touching. Stroking, just stroking, and then you're getting their skin and their body used to your touch, used to your touch. And then you can do the thumb circles or the first finger circles and going around like this, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. So we've got our spine here. And remember, we're just doing head and shoulder here. We're just doing head and shoulder. They're sitting in a chair. You've got their feet in hot water because they've got a headache. And you're just going around. So where you're going around to, you're probably going to about thoracic. You're going to about mid here. So here is arm. And here is waist here. So you're basically only going to about there when you're doing the head and shoulder. So you always start with this gentle stroking, the gentle stroking, and then do the thumb circles and you, you might go around and you might think, oh, there's a tight little bit. The more you do this, the more your fingers will be able to pick it up. And you think, oh, there's another tight bit there. And what you'll often find, but you don't really see this unless I've got no clothes on, but the, the, the trouble, trouble areas will, will go red. But of course, when you're doing head and shoulder and they've got a headache, usually they've got clothes on. And then you go over the other side, but often just with your fingers, you can, you can pick it up. And also going round the spine is very nice. And getting your fingers, see these fingers going in and around the spine here. That feels very nice in and around the spine. And you'll see how far up there you can go. And sometimes just two fingers like this down the spine. Oh, that can be... Very, very nice. And what, what you'll also pick up on if someone goes, oh, that's good, that, that, then, then you'll notice that. So it's not until you've done all that, you might pick up some trouble spots. And often with a headache, there's very tight, very tight here. So that's when you can use your thumbs. But let's say you pick up a tight spot there. It's important not to just stay on that area. What you do is it'll be hard, but then you'll move on and you might go like this a little bit. And then you might move on and down. And often they're, they're tight down in here and you can get your, your whole hand out and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. So remember you're doing rhythm, you want rhythm with, it's no jarring. And then you'll come back and then you might go that again. And, oh, that's very sore, but you'll move on, you'll move on. And you might stroke down here. And then you'll come back. So can you see what you're doing? You don't stay on that area, even though that area needs work. It will be very painful for them. So you keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Spreading it out like this. And so once you've done one side, then you can do the other side. And then often you'll go in with both hands. Now what you've got to be careful with these fingers, and a lot of people do this without thinking, that when you massage at the back, your fingers are about where the collarbone is. 
and you might be so concentrated on your thumbs massaging here you're not realizing you're putting a lot of pressure on that collarbone and that that can be very uncomfortable so be be mindful of that it'd be good maybe after this for everyone to try a little bit on each other yeah I learned to put pressure on, on these, uh, it's the lactic acid, right, that you're yeah. trying to get out and, and to put pressure and then, and then loosen and do a loosen. lot of breathing. And then breathe. Yes, yeah, yeah. You're, it's where you get those knots, that, um, but often it's just too painful. That's why you move away and come back. You move away and you come back. You move away and they can cope a lot better when you do it like that. But what really helps is coming up to the head. But it's a good idea to loosen those shoulders up here before you go up to the head. And the person will let you know how much you can do on the neck. So off, often it's, it's around like this. And then what's nice on the head is just this movement. But I've been to massage places where they do it so hard it's painful. <laughs> Now, I think my husband, he loves it very, very hard. So you're very much picking up. Is that okay? Is that okay? Do you like that pressure? Do you want me to go further? Do you want me to go a little bit less? So these are just simple things that you can do when guests have discomfort. And we get a lot of headaches, a lot of headaches. And one lady, she, she wanted to be taken into hospital. She said, oh, I need a painkiller. So we said, oh, hang on, hang on. Let's we'll see, see what we can do because it's an hour into town and she already had, you know, painkillers. So what are you going to do? To, you get stronger painkillers, then you have to get a doctor to prescribe. It's very, very complicated. But when people are in pain, you know, sometimes they don't think really straight. And so very quickly, you tend them. You tend them very quickly. And you get the hot foot bath. You put their feet in the hot water. Remember, put your, put their foot in your hand first and lower it into the water and if they've got uh, neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy, their feet are cold, remember you just make it warm but you have a boiling kettle there but you get that water, you know, just maybe what your hand, a little bit less what your hand can cope with, you're right there and you've got the kettle on, you've got someone on the kettle so, you, so sometimes you have to move fast. If you see someone stressed, you, just the fact that you're moving fast to help them usually settles them. And then this is often a wonderful opportunity to ask if you can pray for them. And you just say, do you mind if I pray for you? No, I don't want that. Okay, that's perfectly fine. And then you just go into the massage. But I find that 80% of people say, yes, please. You just say a very simple press. If they're a Christian, you can go a little deeper. If they're, if they're not, just make it very simple. We just say, Father in heaven, thank you so much for Sue. Thank you so much that she's here. And it is my prayer that these simple treatments will bring her relief. In the name of Jesus, amen. Just something very simple like that. And then you, you start on all, all of these areas. And if they're enjoying it, you can go a little longer. <laughs> you might even go down the arm to the hand. But with a headache, there's usually constriction here. That's why I break up these areas here, which will help the blood go up there. It relaxes their whole body. But the head can be incredibly nice. So remember, keep with the rhythm. Keep with the rhythm. Go round and round and round and then just bring it up. And sometimes you can go into these areas here. It's really good for you to have a massage and notice what feels nice. <laughs> and, and you can go there. I remember I had a massage once and this girl got these fingers here and she went right into the spine and I thought, that is so good. So you learn a lot by having a massage down. Of course, there's your, your nerves that are, are going down the spine and just spread it, spread it around. And sometimes up in the front here, that also causes a release, sometimes going down to arms. Again, you're, you're feeling your way with the person and say, how does that feel? Is that helping? Well, this lady who wanted to be driven straight into town, within half an hour, she was fine. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, 
you've just you've just got to uh, put all your time into that person, and that that alone often will um, will relax re relax them and bring them relief. So with with massage, I've just really wanted to give some some basics. I wanted to show you, yes, it is moving blood. The importance of uh, of how you start, what you target, and keep to keep to a rhythm. And even if you do a massage course, what you'll find is as you start to massage, you refine it yourself. But even if you don't do a massage course and just start on these simple things, it's important to know your muscles. So I know when my daughters were learning, they had a colouring in book. And that colouring in book was, was every muscle and they coloured in the, you know, there's so many muscles in, in these areas here. And also in the feet, so many muscles around there. And what you do is you choose a muscle a week and start memorising your muscles. This is a big muscle here, that's your trapezius muscle. And that basically comes, ends about there and comes down to about here. That's a very large muscle. I think most people know that's, that's your deltoid, yeah, and that's your bicep and the tricep comes under here. I think most people know them. So if you know them, you're doing well and you can go a little, a little bit further. And you'll find that those simple things are, you, you can do without having done a massage course. But it's not a, it's not a bad idea for everyone that, that works at the retreat to do a simple massage course. You can do them uh, online. And what they do is they send little video clips showing you how to do the moves and often they'll have a, a class maybe once a week. You'll, you'll go in for a few days, especially when it's time to have you tested. So that's something to look at because everybody that comes to a health retreat, what are they looking for? <laughs> They're looking for a massage. So when people come to our retreat, we usually include say two treatments per program and that can be a massage it can be a lymphatic massage which is a more specialized gentle form of massage uh, we also offer facials and uh, facials are something that they very much like so there there are just some simple things that I think everyone will use I think even our laundry lady can do something like that any questions? Yes. Any contraindications to Portugal? Any contraindications? Uh, not really. Remember, you're looking for response. You're looking for a response on on what you do. The only contraindications would be uh, the cold feet in the hot water. And. Uh, but the, the cold feet definitely respond very nicely to, to massage. Yeah. Can you mention just briefly how the lymphatic massage looks like? The lymphatic massage is totally different to massage because massage moves blood, whereas the uh, lymphatic massage, it, you don't want it to move blood. So the lymphatic massage is, is obviously moving your lymphatic system and your lymphatic system is just under your skin. So with the lymphatic massage, it's very light. It's just very, very light, very light. And you've got lymph nodes under your armpits, you've got lymph nodes in your neck and you've got lymph nodes in your groin. So this is a simple one you can even teach people if a woman's had breast cancer and they've taken lymph nodes out, then her arms can swell because the lymph nodes are gone, so the lymphatic fluid from the arms can't empty into the lymph node anymore. So you always open up the neck down into the nodes here. So you can just simply gently pull that down like this. Even if you're going to do the arms, you must also always milk the neck and, then, and your nodes are just here. So it's milking and then little circles around on the, and the milking again. 
And then with the arm, you never start there. You always start here. So you empty that, the lymph here, and then little by little you would go down. And you, you can teach the person that. And of course, having their arm up helps also to drain it. So the lymphatic system is like a network of capillaries. And it's got little gates here and there on it. The uh, blood capillary network has a muscular surrounding. And when the heart pumps, it pumps the whole body through and you've got, you know, we, we feel our pulse, so you've got this pumping action going through, but not the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system doesn't have a pump, so it's basically our movement that moves the lymphatic system. But what moves the lymphatic system more effectively than anything is rebounding. And rebounding is a little mini trampoline. So if someone's got any swelling of any sort, we get them and just start with the health bounce, which basically is just this, just that moving up and down. And the beauty of the rebounder, there's no jarring, there's a springing, there's a springing action on the rebounder. So that's your lymphatic system, totally different to your blood capillary system. Your lymphatic system doesn't have a muscular surrounding like the, like the heart, the heart muscle does. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do um, doctors and nurses and uh, normally get trained in this uh, lymphatic system, and especially when there has been a disruption? Because I mentioned the other day when I got my heart surgery, the people who touched, who started talking about the lymphatic system and the healing, were osteopaths. Yes. And nobody yeah. else had touched it about it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So your osteopaths, your uh, physiotherapists, the physiotherapists, they are trained in, in muscular, in lymph, in muscle, in ligament. So they are the ones more, more likely to, to know those areas. But the lymphatic system is your internal vacuum cleaner. It sweeps away waste in the tissues. And this is why underwire bras are so dangerous because the breast is predominantly lymphatic tissue and it's supposed to clean into the nodes under your arm. But when you've got that wire there from the underwire bra, it effectively blocks it. Did you have a question? Yes. Uh, when you have shock veins, veins, how it causes... Varicose veins? Yes. Yeah. And, and you could be... And you can have a thrombose yeah. in it. And is this dangerous when you massage these shock parts of the leg? Do you know, if it's painful, it's the pain of the body that, that you've got to watch for. Because the blood and the lymph are constantly moving, moving through the area. But with varicose veins, you see your venous system is the blood network that goes back to your heart. Whereas your arteries are the ones that come away from your heart. And you have a second heart that pumps the venous system, and that's your calf muscle. So just moving your foot up and down, as you can see, stimulates that heart muscle. So people with varicose veins are good to do this a lot <laughs> when they're standing at the sink or doing anything, is to, is to do that calf muscle. Now the three exercises that are the best for the calf muscle, for varicose veins, and are, so you, you have to be careful you're not putting more pressure on those, on those legs. So no running, no jumping, so, and not a lot of walking even. But the three exercises are rebounder, because the rebounder really works that calf muscle, and you've got a cushioning effect. There's no jarring. Exercise bike, because Half of your weight, you know, you're sitting on, that's half of your weight going there, so you haven't got a huge amount of weight going on your legs. And swimming, swimming, the, the feet going, the legs and the feet going up and down, that really massages that calf muscle. So that, the legs need movement, but they do not need weight and jarring. So if someone's got varicose veins, they're the three types of exercises that it's best to advice for them and 
look at giving them a weight loss program because the more weight, the more pressure. There's usually an inherited factor with varicose veins. So you, you mentioned that, but remember, genetics loads the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. So you can show them how to, how to manage it. And there is a herb called witch hazel. And you can get witch hazel cream. I don't know if there's one or two H's there. And witch hazel constricts the blood vessels. So when they apply the witch hazel cream to the varicose veins, it can help to constrict. Now on the inside, we want to strengthen the, the wall of the, of the veins. Can you remember what herb strengthens the walls? Cane pepper. So taking cane pepper every day maybe starting at a quarter of a teaspoon three times a day, that will strengthen from the inside. And the other factor that I find with, um, with varicose veins is constipation. If someone is regularly constipated, that puts extra weight on the legs and can put extra pressure on the varicose system. Yes? <coughs> Varigose veins, now your venous system, it's usually in the legs, in the back of the legs, it's when people get swollen. Yeah. And I know one of the surgeries is to cut and then just strip, just pull it straight out. That can be quite painful and it doesn't really solve yeah. the problem. I yeah. can I can demonstrate for you when we are not a video how they trained me to get rid because I had quite a lump of them at the back of my feet and mm -hmm. after the operation then it was identified as not being good by osteopaths and I trained and they disappeared. Mm -hmm. And I can do when we are not video. Any more questions? Yes? Uh, it's ought to be sitting position or standing position or lying position. For varicose veins? When you do the massage. When you do the massage, um, when you're trained to do a massage and you're at the table, the best way to massage is from your thighs. If a person massages like this, they're going to get a sore back and they're going to wear out very quickly. But if they massage like this, can you see your whole body's doing the massage? Mm -hmm. And you're massaging from your thighs. Um, I've got a friend, she does seven massages a day doing it like that. She's a friend, all right, she's my daughter. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's, that's how she massages. She's massaging from her core and from her thighs. But if you massage like that, you're going to get a sore back and sore arms very quickly. Mm. And again, the rhythm is very, very important. But when you're doing those simple things like your, the feet, and remember, even when you're doing the feet, do, get down on the ground and do it. Never should we bend like that. Mm. That weakens the back. The, the bend should always, always have that straight back. You can go in front of the mirror and just look at your back and see how far down you can go without bending it and practice makes perfect and practice means you can do a little bit more more every day. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of people believe in foot re reflexone massage. Do you know what that is? Food reflex? Uh, feet. Foot. Foot, foot. Foot reflex. Foot reflex. So a lot of people believe in that. When we massage the foot, what do we say? It's not so what they say or, or believe? A reflexology. One, two, three, four, five. Reflexology. Now I'm just going to give you some facts here. The fact is, there's a different reflex for every part of your body on the sole of your feet. That's not believing it or not believing it, it's just fact. <laughs> it just is. Now a lot of new ages 
use this and seem to be able to interpret your future and because they go into those areas, unfortunately reflexology has got a bad name. But sometimes when someone's sick and you can't touch them anywhere, you can massage their feet. And what's interesting is here's the neck. <laughs> so if someone's got a sore neck, they can massage around there. And this is often head. And your colon is like this. And the other part of your colon is on the other, on the other foot. You can get charts that show you, but it is a controversial subject. Mm -hmm. That is true. So when you say it's fact, you've experienced the results? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't do reflexology, but I have had uh, contact with people that do. And when I was in Jakarta about 10 years ago, I had some rice at lunch, not realising it had sat out for a few hours and I got very sick. And I got very bad diarrhoea. I had it for lunch and then through the night and the next morning I had terrible diarrhoea. I was taking charcoal. To, to slow things down. My energy was just gone, but I had to speak. I had to speak because the camera people were there. There was a doctor there who was interpreting for me. And there was a whole lot of people ready for these sessions. And everyone was looking very worried. <laughs> and then a lady came in and she said, would you let my husband work on your feet? He's a reflexologist. He's a Seventh-day Adventist man. I said, yes. <laughs> and he said, I, because you're a woman, I want to put a sock on your feet. And he started to work on the stomach area on the bottom of my feet. And little by little, I revived and I was able to give a two-hour two -hour lecture. And she said, we, we get amazing results with this because there are parts of your body you can't, sometimes you can't go to, but you can always go to the feet. And so whether you, yes, some say, do you believe in it or you don't, the fact is God put on the bottom of our feet a different part for different parts of the body. There, there is no, no doubt about that. But because it's such a controversial subject, I don't usually talk about it and, you know, we, we don't have a reflexologist at our health centre. But... Um, I have talked to other massage therapists and they say, what you say is right. There's, you know, you can get charts that show what part of the body there's a reflex for that and you can try, try it out yourself. But um, personally, I don't have a, have a problem with it, even though we don't use it and I, I rarely talk about it, mostly because it's a controversial, controversial issue. Well, it's been a long day. We might call it a day. You might like to go and massage each other. I'll close with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so much for, for teaching us today. Thank you for coming close and revealing to us some of the secrets of this amazing body that you've given us. I pray, Father, that you will help us to retain and understand and ultimately implement what we've learned here. And we pray these things today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.